All right, make parts. Why is this thing important? Okay, let me just create another wall type because, you know, we're on fire today. So in, instead of this ugly brick, I'll just put some kind of like aluminum panels and I will create before we start a bunch of different colors of, of that aluminum panel just so that I can illustrate my point, okay? First of all, I'll do edit type and instead of brick and instead of 90, uh, I will put something like 32. Uh, this is common, let's say, if you're using Panfab uh, here in Canada. Uh, I think they also shaped it in the US. Anyways, I would hope they do, really. Aluminium. Aluminum for some of you, I suppose. Let's just hit OK, OK, and let's just see what this looks like. Great, fantastic. I'll just go to manage here and go to my materials and find aluminum. Aluminium. Alum. Huh? <laughs> Funny thing. You have aluminum and aluminium. Uh, this is this is beautiful. All right. Duplicate material and acids. Oh, this is new. This used to be only duplicate. You know what? Materials and shared assets. I don't want anything shared between these materials except for the name. So this would be blue. Blue, not brew. So let's say if I, if I, if I, if I, just the appearance. Come on very quickly. You know, I'm actually not that consider, uh, worried about the, the rendered because we're not rendering today. But I'm just going to put some kind of a, a blue here and apply. And then I'll just kind of duplicate this and the shared assets and then i'll call this e e yellow and then here i'll just put some some kind of uh i was looking for something a little bit more pikachu but hey poop works okay so i have aluminum uh, sorry <laughs> aluminium aluminium blue and um aluminium yellow great so i just want to make sure that they kind of work as expected edit type change this then if I go to aluminium blue, and if I say, okay, okay, well, they really don't. Maybe one of the reasons for it is because if we go and shut it, there you go. We are good to, I did not duplicate it. See, very important to duplicate stuff. Okay, so so let, let's just, no, we can't keep it blue. This is way too ugly. Let's just go back to aluminium. Okay, so, up, up until now, uh, probably you've noticed that I would do this thing where I select a wall, hit BX to create the section box around it, and then I would bring it in in order for me to see the layers. Yeah. So I can actually break the wall into all of its components. So if I select it and here the modify thing kind of goes up automatically, I can say create parts. So this is the icon. There's no shortcuts by default. And if I hit OK, click, you would see that it would divide the wall into its components. That doesn't mean that the wall is changed. The wall is the exact same one. You can tag it in plan, you can tag it in elevation, you can tag it in section, you can tag it in whatever you want. Viewing the parts or being able to see them, it's actually a view specific setting, okay? So you see that now I can select only one of them or like at least I can select one by one, but I cannot select the whole wall. I cannot change the length. I cannot change the height or whatever. I can just select individual parts. So if I select nothing, for a moment, and if I go to, to my properties here, you would see that there's this thing called parts visibility, which right now states show parts. But if I say show me the original, you will see that this wall behaves like it used to before. There's also an option, not a fan of it, I actually don't know anyone who's a fan of it, to show both. So you can select each part, but you can also select the wall and kind of pull it around, all right? If I put a window in it, nothing really changes. It behaves as usual. Even if I say show parts, the window still stays. I can move it around. So in a way, you haven't lost the wall that you know and love already, all right? Uh, it behaves just exactly the same. But the thing is that what I can do now is I can actually select any one layer of, of the parts or any one part, if you wish, and I can divide it into pieces in a such a way that I can actually create joints uh, in between them. So let me give you an example. I will take the very, very last layer, which is my 32 millimeter Panfab aluminum panels. And after I select it, you see that here in the modify, I have this thing called divide parts, okay? And I will hit divide parts and I have several, well, several, I have two options to do it. I can either sketch a path or choose an intersecting reference. I'll start with the sketching a path, uh, a path because it's easier, but the real power move is in the intersecting references. So I want to sketch uh, and I would make sure that I set up my plane, 
pick a plane and I'll set it up to be the surface itself. So you will see that I can just draw a line like this. Um, I can draw a line like that. If you want, I can have it like this. And then I will just hit OK. So now you will see that it actually started splitting that surface. Not only that, I can actually specify exactly what I want the gap of that split to be. So uh, let's see if I'm still using the example of Panfab here in, in Canada, I would say something like 19 millimeters. And you'll see that this gap actually widened. I can do something like 25, so it's a little bit more dramatic and that works. And I can say, okay, so you see that I just split my wall into several different parts. If I ever am not happy with the way I split it, what I can do is I can select it, edit the division, edit the sketch, and I can say, hey buddy, I wanted it to be a little bit straighter here or whatever, hit okay, so now you're good to go. All right, so we've split the elements, but this is now where it ends. I can actually change the material of each of those elements individually, which is great. So now I can, you, you kind of see where the possibilities go with this, right? So let's say I would select this panel here and this panel here and look at the properties again. You see where it says material by original. I don't want that. Click material. What do you want? And I'll say I want aluminium blue. So now it's in blue. I would select this one. Oh, we're getting into Best Buy and Ikea. Turn off the material by original and I want aluminium yellow. So boom, very quickly, just like that, I'm able to create, I'm able to create different pieces, different parts. And again, keep in mind that doesn't change the way that this wall behaves. If I, for a moment, come here to parts visibility and I show the original, it would look like the monolithic gray aluminium we had at the very beginning. I can slap a window in it, that's fine. I can actually stretch it, that's also fine. And if I go back into my show parts, you will see that the location of the lines where I drew them doesn't matter, it doesn't change. I can put this window right at the intersection, that's fine. The parts would adapt. You see the parts would actually recognize the cutting of the window. So I can actually grab this window, move it somewhere here, and you will see that the parts would adapt to it as well. So this is extremely useful. Another thing is that they're also schedulable. For triangles, it's a little misleading, but if I select any of these parts and if I edit the division and I edit the sketch again, and if I make sure that these lines are, uh, instead of being all funky and stuff, they're all straight. Okay. Again, it messes up a little bit the materials because some of the parts don't exist or yet. Actually, they don't exist anymore. If I select any of these panels, you will see that it gives me the volume, the area, the length, and the height, and the thickness. So I can actually schedule all of this. So if someone asks me, how many panels do you need of particular type or of particular color? I can tell this to them right away. It's absolutely fantastic. I would actually go back to the previous example because it was just slightly prettier, but just slightly, not that many. You know, show parts, okay, cool. Uh, what is happening now? Let's say show original, show, show part. All right, fantastic. The thing is that once you divide it into pieces, it's not just the material you can change. You can actually change the thickness of that thing. You can actually change the shape of them individually. So let's say I would select this beautiful yellow here. And if you kind of look at the properties again, there's this thing called show shape handles. And I want you to click this and just watch the handles appear. So now I can actually grab it and have it stick out. Keep in mind, this is the same original Revit wall, but now I can manipulate it literally as I see fit. I can actually select it, bring this down a little bit. And, and this is not just some random geometry. This is still part of my wall. I love it. And, uh, you know, I can actually grab this one. Uh, I can say, show me the handles. Make it a little bigger here. Make it a little bit shorter there. And so on and so on and so on. So this becomes very useful. If for whatever reason I see this piece and I just don't want to see it anymore, I can, uh, let's actually use the blue here as an example. It's, it's, it's going to be more of a contrast. Here at the top where it says exclude parts, click, gone. It's not gone, but it's just excluded. That's all it is. I can select it again and I can restore it so it would come back. So this is also a way if you have certain patterns where certain things need to be in reveal and need to be pushed in, that this is an opportunity for you to do that. It's great. 
All right, I'm going to delete all of that. And actually by doing this, what you do is you revert the wall back to its original state. And let's do the power move where we're going to dissect this wall using not just lines, but we're going to use reference planes. And this is where the power move is because it actually gives you greater control, greater control outside of the wall. So you'll be able to change things like reference planes and grid lines, which in turn are going to be manipulating the wall. So you don't have to kind of go into it every single time. Okay. So for that purpose, I'll go and put myself in, in plan and I would go to architecture and now draw a reference plane. Okay. And I'll draw a reference plane, let's say here, and I would give it a name. And this is important because you actually have to give it a name because you can end up having, let's say, thousand reference planes in a very big project. Revit is not interested in keeping track of all of them for you to be able to split a surface. It's only the one that you would name, okay? So I would click here uh, on the name and I would say this is RP for reference plane, cut one, okay? And then the funny thing is that if I copy it, I just want to constrain it here one time, the next one will be called reference plane cut two, similarly to the grid lines. So if I do copy just a bunch of times, whatever, I don't care. You will see that it gets to reference plane cut six and so on and so on and so on. And I'm just going to put this like dimension line in between them because um, I'm very picky. I have a limit of how big these panels are. I need to make sure I don't surpass a certain length, let's say eight feet or whatever it is. So. I do the WD thing again, where I split my screen and I would select my wall again because I want to create the parts, go back to the same now familiar place, which is called create parts, hit it and the parts are created. Fantastic. I would choose my external layer, which is my 32 millimeter pan fab, 32 millimeter pan fab aluminum panel. I would divide the parts and this time, instead of saying edit the sketch, what I would say is use intersecting references. All right click these, another window opens, and these references can be your levels, it can be your grid lines, and can be your reference planes. In this particular case, the only thing I'm interested in, uh, in is cutting it with my reference planes. And uh, not my grids, reference planes, thank you. So I can go click, 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 say okay, and you would see that the cuts are already in place. Same thing, I can say, I want you to give me a 25 millimeter gap in between them, hit okay, and now my gaps are there. So now the beauty is that if I want to change the location of this particular gap, I don't have to come here, uh, edit the division, edit the sketch and so on. All I need to do is grab this reference plane and let's say, say one meter here and it would move. I can move it here, it would move with it. So, so this is a, a, an excellent way to create some kind of a rhythm on a facade, change the material, because keep in mind, you can still do that, right? I can select it, material by original, no thank you. Uh, you know, I can even kind of go to a little bit of a perversion, I go for cast in place, concrete, whatever. And actually I can change all the materials one by one. And so this also begs the question of how you deal with this in elevation or at least in your elevation views, because keep in mind, seeing the part is view specific, right? You didn't change the nature of the wall. Yes, you told Revit, hey, I want you to look at this wall in a, in a little bit of a different way because I'll be splitting it in, in just a second, but you're still dealing with the same wall. So when I go in my elevation here, so this is the wall I'm facing it, and if I go in, Unless I explicitly tell Revit that in this particular view, which can be part of my view template, that I want to see the parts, it's just not going to show them to me. It, it, Revit doesn't care. So I would come and while I'm in my view, I would do parts visibility, show parts, and now I can see them. And you can see how the reference plane is right in the middle. Another reason why I love using this particular method is that when... I need to dimension these panels. If I'm using reveals, let's say, which we just covered, uh, it can be a little bit difficult to dimension these, okay? But in this case, in my elevation view, I can, you know, say something like, okay, these are the dimensions, and I can come inside. Oh, this is so bad. And then I can put that this is on center. 
and I would just distribute this all over again. And the manufacturer would know, aha, the middle of my joint is right here and this is the distance between them. So then they can manufacture it according to this. So even if I move a panel a little bit, or in this case, I'm not moving the panel, I'm moving the reference plane, my dimension would follow. And so it would with my annotation. We do this for panels, we also do this for windows, but again, a topic for, for another conversation. So I hope that, uh, so anyways, this concludes the how to wall tutorial in, in, in Revit. I really hope that even though we started with something extremely basic as to what goes inside of a wall, uh, by the end of this, you feel a little bit more masterful with, with walls in Revit. I uh, hope, hopefully, if uh, if you're a beginner and there's something about it that felt intimidating, well, this wouldn't be the case anymore. I would encourage all of you to experiment as much as humanly possible. Please do, because the more you do, then the things that feel intimidating now would just become a mechanical kind of like muscle memory and you'll be able to do it over and over and again. It also makes troubleshooting a lot easier. And... Most importantly, yielding a software correctly and in depth would help you create better buildings. And, and this is literally what we need now. We need better, we need good buildings. We need good visuals so that all of us can enjoy it and the public can enjoy it too. My name is Daniel. I really hope you enjoy this. This is a small channel. So please, if you enjoyed it, tell me about it. If I missed something, just put it in the comments and, and tell me about it. I would actually like to hear uh, your opinion. I would like to hear suggestions. I would like to hear success stories, especially, you know, typical YouTube stuff. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe, whatever. There's going to be more coming up. All right, guys. See you on the flip side.